Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the second segment of Huda tonight. On Monday nights, we usually talk about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is our biography series with Sheikh Zakaria. Tonight, we will be talking about a different topic. We will take the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and discuss the different events that happened during the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we will talk about the companions' love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In which ways did they show their love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in which ways we can show our love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So I want to start off by welcoming and introducing my guest, Sheikh Zakaria. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program, Sheikh Zakaria. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How was your week from last Monday? Alhamdulillah, uh, always in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Just began our exams, uh, first exams gone past already. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa taala has made it quite. Uh, you know, right, uh, we uh, managed to uh, write the paper. And uh, also, Alhamdulillah, it was a week of uh, studying, you know, and uh, taking a rest. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make the exams that are forthcoming uh, easy, also, Inshallah. I mean, I mean, is it hard doing the exams with your newborn? Alhamdulillah, it uh, it's a different environment. Uh, you know, sleep is less. Uh, you know, you try to sleep, but uh, sometimes you know the small ones have the different. Uh, problems at night. Sometimes you don't know what is wrong with them. But uh, Alhamdulillah, at the same time, it's a it's an experience. So uh, no complaints. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Sheikh. I want to start off by asking you. You know, when exactly is the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Well, um, I think so. From that question, we might extract the word uh, exactly because <laughs> there's no exact date to the uh, the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And until today, it is, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, a, a matter, a debate uh, when the, the birth of the Prophet ﷺ took place, where some mention it was 52 or 53 days after the uh, event of the elephant. One, what is known is that it was in the year of the elephant, a few days after that incident or that event. Um, also, what is known is that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's father was uh, his age was about 24 years old uh, when his uh, when he was married to the mother of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So uh, basically, you can extract from that, but uh, even historians do not find the proper. Uh, even some had made mention that the 12th of the Rabi'ul Awwal, where some scholars make mention that that is a weak chain because there are other chains of the dates or uh, pertaining to the birth of the Prophet وسلم, which are much more stronger. So uh, basically it's a matter of difference of opinion when really uh, did the birth of the Prophet took pla take place. What we do know is that <coughs> after the birth of the Prophet وسلم, and just, just a few things we can uh, take heed and you know benefit from is that um, his father died before uh, while he was in the womb of his mother um, and was buried in uh, 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 just f a few miles away from Medina, uh, by the in the uh, at the place of the, the the tribe of Abu Najjar, and um, his mother when she gave birth to him, uh, for seven days he was suckled by um, one of the slaves of Abu Lahab, uh, by the name of uh, Thuwaiba. Uh, and uh, she also suckled Musrah bin Thuwaiba, her son, and Sayyidina Hamza, making these two the foster brothers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And um, uh, normally, w which is the custom of the Arabs, is that after seven days, they would give away the child to, uh, you know, any of the tribes or the, the Bedouin tribes, you know, to look after them. Why? Because of... Uh, it was a much more pure lifestyle, you know, different from the urban uh, lifestyle. And it was much more, the speech would be much more eloquent. Um, the Prophet ﷺ was taken by uh, Hali, Hali, Halima bint Sa'diyah, who was from the Sa'd clan, Banu Sa'd, uh, the Hawazin tribe. And um, uh, this is where the Prophet ﷺ, uh, she took care of the Prophet ﷺ for over four years, some mentioned five years. What I would like to mention from this year is yesterday, um, my wife showed me a question where she follows a page on Facebook. It's called uh, Muslim Woman um, in Cape Town. And one of the women asked a question 
uh, my wife showed me this question. It was that the question was that is it? She said that this, there's a certain mother who has uh, about uh, 12 or 13, or she has a lot of children. You know, uh, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa taala has granted her a lot of children, uh, but they are not wealthy. Uh, you know, she's having difficulty looking after all of those children. I mean, it is quite in today's time, especially all around the world, it is very costly uh, to look after uh, one child. You know, you have your nephews that you have to buy, you mm. have your milk. Imagine you 12 children. Imagine 12. Uh, yeah. Even uh, it, it's not, ex uh, so it's a lot of children. So uh, she was asking the question uh, that the mother wants to ask one of the family members who uh, who do not have children who do not have children who maybe can't conceive children so she wants to ask uh, the mother is thinking of asking that certain family that is it possible for you to take one of my children and look after them probably the baby or someone who's still very young at age and she asked what do uh, what do the muslim woman think of this idea is it good for the child because sometimes what happens is when, it, when the child comes, uh, grows up, sometimes they could, you know, be furious. Why did my mom give me over? Or, you know, it, it could cause a tension. Many people wrote different things, and I took the opportunity to extract from this. Where we see in the lifestyle of the Prophet wasallam uh, that his mother, this wasn't a problem that she couldn't look after him. But what we can extract is that if you see a better future for your child, if you see a better opportunity, because they were in the city, and it was known in the Arab, in the Bedouin, that their speech was more eloquent and it was much more pure. Uh, the environment also was much more pure. So, if you see a, a better environment for your child, uh, if you see a better opportunity, then we can extract from the Prophet's mother giving him over uh, to Halima bint Saadiya. Secondly, uh, the mother should look at not just giving it over to a rich family, but also the child, because it is her responsibility, she should look at the characteristics of that family. Mm, who she's going to give her child to. Who she's going to give her yeah. child to. So it's not basically just giving it over to a family member and you know what, because they have money. Sometimes they're not following on Dean. Sometimes they are very open uh, towards, uh, they have a very modest lifestyle. So what you are doing is in actual fact you are ruining uh, the, 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 future, youth, yeah. the the future yeah. of your child. So basically this was some of the things and this is how we uh, show, uh, yeah, this is how we extract from the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is just something which I would like to have uh, connected to the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi yeah. Wasallam. Right, Shaykh, uh, after giving us a brief uh, you know, idea of what happened during the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to ask you, why is celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu such a big controversy amongst Muslims? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, <laughs> SubhanAllah, um, uh, one of the things that a person would, uh, in today's time, uh, this has become such a controversial topic, so contentious, you know, everybody is uh, everybody is debating, uh, everybody is waiting to listen to what does the scholar have to say, what does, uh, and then some uh, justify it by listening to the view of his scholar, mm. others, you know, negate it by listening to the view of his scholar, uh, you know, so uh, basically, uh, the last time we spoke, I said that this is where we use now uh, a hadith of the Prophet where he says, istafti qalbak meaning that ask your heart, you yourself as an individual, what does this day mean to you? Not what the scholar says, not what this favorite scholar of yours says, not what that favorite scholar of yours says, and this is our problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to love our Islam on basically taking everything what the scholar you like says, whereas we don't see that sometimes that could be, uh, for example, many people just because they said it's permissible, uh, 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 you know, so they go there and have a nice time, you know, he, he, it's, you know, it's a nice day, it's a relaxing day, there'll be food there, uh, you know, and we're going to recite some uh, praises, you know, and someone is going to recite nice and I'm going to enjoy the, the qira'ah, you know, 
and I'm going to enjoy the, the nasheeds, the, 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 the different mm -hmm. tones in the nasheeds and that, you know. Oh, subhanAllah, see how he goes on that name, see what maqamat he uses in this. Yeah, so, you understand what I'm trying to yeah. say? So, you need to basically ask yourself, um, what do you see in this day? Is it a day of just listening to beautiful praises, uh, just uh, listening to nice voices singing the praises of the Prophet? Or is it, in actual fact, increasing love for the Prophet Sallallahu And uh, what I heard, like for example, some scholars would say, how do they make it permissible? One of the scholars said that, take for example, an alarm clock. Now, an alarm clock, if you can only use that alarm clock to wake up for Fajr, meaning that without the alarm clock, you will sleep over. And that alarm clock, as soon as you hear it, it wakes you up. So he says, because that is a means of you waking up for Fajr, then that becomes obligatory for you to have mm -hmm. that alarm clock. So he says, similarly, uh, this is one of them that makes it permissible. He says, similarly, um, looking at this year, um, the, 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 the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu if that is a means that it increases your love and it, 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 you contemplate on that day and it because of the day itself uh, there's much more benefit for you in that day then it becomes for you uh, it becomes uh, you know s something like obligatory or it becomes permissible for you on that day to uh, you know to invoke uh, uh, and, and to recite the uh, praises of the Prophet Sallallahu and to remember uh, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu um, many other scholars bring the, uh, they refute that. Why? Because they say that the problem is uh, that, and this is a few of the, of the problems. One of the problems is that the date of the Prophet, like we said, first of all, there's a difference of opinion on the date. Okay. Secondly, if that is not such a major, uh, secondly, many other scholars say that uh, there is none of the companions that they had seen who uh, celebrated uh, this day mm. as it is been done in today's time. I mean, you find people who buy sweets on this day, you know, they feel that they should bring sweets. Uh, they f the, um, I mean, there's different things that people have added towards this day which they see as good. But the problem is that sometimes what you see as good and what you are adding at that certain time could be forbidden. For example, reciting the Quran is good. But if you're going to recite loud when a person is sleeping, then that certain good act at that time is not good. So similarly here, uh, looking at the time when you are choosing to do this act, you, are, you can go out, buy sweets, chocolates, and uh, you know they buy certain sweet meats on this day. And so if you're stipulating it with the day, then this is becoming an innovation which has not been done before. Um, but, you know, some can argue that it's a good innovation. It gets the person who never used to come to the masjid or, you know, to any Islamic gathering, it gets him to come to an Islamic gathering. What would you say to that then? Yes. Now, the problem is that what we are going to be creating is, we are going to be creating uh, customary Muslims where they only see it fit to... Uh, make ibadah on certain days. For example, you get your Ramadan Muslims. Uh, you get your Jumu'ah Muslims who only come for the Jumu'ah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the one poet, <laughs> he gave a, a, a beautiful poem where he said that um, because of uh, in, his, in his village when it used to be the first day of Ramadan, then people would give out food and give out parcels and you know give out a lot of things. And he used to say that, I used to think that there are no Muslims in this area. But on the first day of Ramadan, oh, mashallah, Muslims from min kulli fajjin amik, from every deep uh, valley and, and the uh, from earth. the depths of yeah. the earth. Uh, why? Because this is the type of, similarly, uh, there was a person, a great uh, ascetic scholar by the name of Bishar Hafi. Uh, and um, one day someone came to him and he said to him, come and see, come with me. 
So he went with him and they came into the, masa the, 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 the masjid and it was the first day of Ramadan. And there was halaqat, meaning different groups of people. There were people who were reciting Quran. There were people who were making adhkar. There were people who were uh, making sunnah, nawafil. There were different groups of people making different types of ibadah. And then he said, may the curse of Allah SWT be upon them. So this person who brought Bishar Hafi said to him, subhanallah, how is this possible that you curse a people who are making ibadah? And that is why they say, ittaqu firasat al-mu'min fa innahu yanduru bi nurillah. That fear the foresight of a believer for verily he sees with the foresight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed him with. He said that woe and the curse of Allah be on those people who only find the remembrance of Allah and who only find the love of the sunnah on stipulated days. And this was the act of the disbelievers. Why? When do they find the love of their mother? On, father, on Mother's Day. Only on Mother's Day can you buy your mother flowers. Only on Mother's Day do you send your mother a love message that, oh my mom, I love you. Only on Mother's Day do you remember what your mom, mom, mom had done for you. What about the entire uh, year that goes by? So that is why they say every day is a Mother's Day. And every day should be a birth of the Prophet and how we, uh, in our lives, and this is why if we encourage uh, this year where people should come to the massage, then he will wait for that day. Meaning that he will, you know, and what happens is some people become so that they sin throughout the year thinking that they will cleanse themselves on the, uh, in, in the month of Ramadan. Because in that month they're going to be reciting Quran. So again, we're on a fine line of uh, how we bring forward this to the people. Mm. All right, Sheikh, I want to ask you how we can celebrate the Prophet's birthday. But before I do that, I want you guys to take a look at this short video by Sheikh Mufti Mink. And after that, I'm going to ask Sheikh Zakaria for his comments on the video. The next point that is important for us to realize is the issue of innovation where a person feels that they know better than the messenger may peace be upon him the messenger peace be upon him was sent to us in order to teach us how to worship Allah that was the reason why he was sent he was sent to teach us how the Almighty wants to be worshipped so if anyone comes up with an act of worship that was not taught by the messenger peace be upon him he has directly insulted the messenger and he has also directly insulted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason is, what was the point of sending a messenger to teach us how to worship Allah when we think we know better than him? May Allah protect us. And sometimes people get so upset when we tell the people not to do things which were not done by the messenger. They think perhaps you, be you belong to a sect that is deviant. May the Almighty protect us. There is no deviance in a sect that calls towards obeying the instruction of the messenger and abandoning anything in terms of acts of worship that he has not taught. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The messenger has said on many occasions, I leave with you two things. For as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never be led astray. That is the book of Allah and my traditions, my way. Brothers and sisters, if you take a look at Surah Al-Kahf, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the biggest losers, those who do lots of deeds and they think they are doing good deeds. But at the same time, they have not followed the messenger's path and way. And this is why they have lost. Say, oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, should I inform you of the one who is the greatest of losers or those who are the greatest of losers of their deeds? People who have spoiled their deeds completely, they are those whose struggle was always astray. They neither followed the path of the messenger. They did deeds 
acts of worship which were not taught not done by the messenger may peace be upon him and they thought that they were doing good allahu akbar allahu akbar beloved brothers and sisters never ever think that there is a single act of worship that the messenger forgot to teach us never ever think that there is any act of worship that you may engage in that would be better than what the messenger has come with and never ever think that the messenger has not done the deeds which were enough for us to follow so now we need to come up with a new deed and a new act of worship that would result in the spoiling of your deeds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us brothers and sisters islam is very easy it is us sometimes who add the salt and pepper to our religion in order to try and decorate it with innovation not realizing innovation can never decorate your cake but instead it will make it unpalatable that which can never be consumed may the almighty protect us from innovation of every Welcome back to Hadith tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed that short video clip by Mufti Ismail Mink. It's always great to hear from him. So I want to start off by asking Sheikh Zakaria his thoughts on that video. Go ahead, Sheikh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My thoughts on the video that has just been uh, played forward uh, by, uh, for us is that when you look at what uh, Mufti Mink is trying to say, uh, and um, I would say that I wouldn't go so deep as to really negate everything. Um, what I would say is that what we can extract from this year is that how do you want to look at this day? And uh, that's why coming back to the point that I said is that if on this day it is your normal day of um, where you are going to go to the masjid or wherever and get together with some friends and you are going to recite uh, some Quran and you are going to recite some um, praises of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with no exaggerations, with no uh, funny uh, habits or things that we no associate dancing. or dancings or mm -hmm. things that, that, we, that we associate this day with, no going over extreme, uh, you know, then uh, this is something which is good. This is something which is not an in innovation because uh, it is general. Uh, that uh, uh, that uh, you know you, you can uh, any at any time it is a general command that at any time you can uh, invoke uh, praises on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No place has been stipulated, no times have been stipulated. It is at your free will. Ya uh, ladina Allah. That oh people remember Allah. Uh, you know so. Th all of these verses give you that permission uh, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to sit with your friends. That is why I say that if from the house already your intention is that you, this is or the only means for your friends, uh, for, for, for friends uh, to do your, that you'll get together and you'll invoke this year to increase your love, and there's nothing else attached to that, then that is by far not an innovation, but rather that is something which is good, something which is beneficial. The problem comes in when we create these mass mauluds, uh, we create these mass celebrations, which starts by having men and women who are mixed. Uh, it starts by people uh, reciting. Uh, we, we, we're just going to listen to the reciting. We don't even understand the meaning of what is being recited. Uh, we don't even uh, we, we don't even take benefit from that day, nor do we have any type of the sunnah in our lifestyle. Then, uh, th then what is this day for you? It, it's just uh, th that is uh, that is being a hypocrite. If there is no lifestyle of the Prophet وسلم, in you, and yet here you are amongst the forefront runners who are celebrating the birth of the Prophet وسلم, you are lying to yourself. So. Um, the best way to celebrate uh, the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for starters is that you fast on that day. You can fast on that day uh, like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted on the day of Ashura. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these were, this, was an, this was a celebration where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said we are more uh, deserving of Sayyidina Musa than you all. 
So he made the 10th, 11th, or the 9th, the 10th fasting days to celebrate the day of Ashura. Uh, secondly, how can, we uh, how can we celebrate on that day? Meaning that if we are in, uh, meaning that increase the lifestyle and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Make an intention that this is a day where I'm going to increase my, 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 my deeds from last year to this year. I'm going to increase it. This is showing love towards the Prophet Sallallahu And this was indeed uh, how they celebrated. Look at, for example, when we look at Sayyidina Umar, who came and he told the Prophet Sallallahu that I have love for you. Uh, the only thing is that I love myself more. And the Prophet said, no, it is not yet enough. So with this is what we see, that have we reached that stage where we have complete love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I do not want the viewers to confuse me. I am not against uh, the celebration of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we be against? All that we are saying is from there we can understand sometimes you will do deeds that dalla sa'yuhum, that uh, you, you, it is almost like uh, your, 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 your going towards that, your sa'i, your, your, your rushing towards that is in deviation from what is and you are thinking that you are doing something good. So we should, like again, coming back to the point, look in ourselves and each individual should ask himself, what is my reasons for this day here? What is my um, reasons for celebrating this day here? And if it is not increasing, and if it is not increasing my love for the Prophet ﷺ and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in me, then I should try and find different methodologies and ideologies that can enhance in me the love of the Prophet ﷺ. All right, Shaykh, we know that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, they love the Prophet ﷺ more than any of us. Uh, can you give us examples of how they showed their love for the Prophet ﷺ? Uh, I'm going to go a bit back into the uh, the, the initial stages and I want to use we sometimes hear many a times the Sahabi had love in this person but let us go into okay, where hold on, I'm just going to have to hold you for one second we have a phone call from Ahmed from Egypt Assalamu alaikum uh, How are you brother Ahmed? I'd like to extend my love to own program uh, preparator and uh, I like to and like uh, also to thank you for this very for this uh, program uh, special all right and we thank you for calling uh, is there anything you'd like to share with us yeah well, okay, okay. I'd like I, I'd like to, 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 to talk about uh, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his uh, treatment and uh, how uh, we as Muslims should follow, follow him. Sure, uh, sure, Prophet go ahead. Our, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, the, the peace uh, rule and the peace uh, character that that one, uh, that Muslim should follow in all his life. Uh, uh, let us talk, uh, let us, uh, talk about uh, his mercy in his dealing with his family and uh, his, and his companions, and with animals as well. In his dealing with his family, he, uh, our Prophet Muhammad, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hello, assalamu alaikum. I think we lost him. Okay, uh, so Sheikh, as you were saying before. Uh, I was asking you, sorry, I was asking you different ways that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ showed their love towards the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, like we were saying is that if we look at the, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, this is where we would see um, when they were, this is where we would see, this was the initial stages of the companions. They were only with the Prophet over five or six years. And, uh, you know, they were still coming to terms with some of them that had been separated from their families and the migration and the battles that were taking place and everything was still, uh, we would say, not brand new, but it was still new to them. Mm. And um, we look at when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was, uh, was signed, uh, before that, a few uh, uh, hours or, you know, before that, 
uh, a person by the name of uh, Orwa, who was, uh, you know, he was putting his hand while speaking to the Prophet in the face of the Prophet and Mughira bin Shu'bah hit his hand with the, with the handle of his sword, you know, and he said, behave yourself. And uh, secondly, he went back to his people and he said that I have traveled to the magnificent palaces of the Romans and the Persians, but I have not seen a people more who show so much of love and uh, devotion to the, to the leader, like how they showed to the Prophet ﷺ that when he makes ablution, they don't even let the, 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 the sprinkles of the water or the drops of the water touch the ground. Um, so what they did is, he said to them that, you know, we should sign a contract with him. So they sent the attorney, Suhail bin Amr. And when Suhail bin Amr came, um, the Prophet ﷺ, on seeing him coming, the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, this is khair, this is good. So it means that they want peace. And when he came, he began writing out the uh, the, the, the rule uh, the, the the contract, and um, when the Prophet Sallallahu told uh, Ali uh, to write out their contract, the Prophet Sallallahu told him to write Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and the first thing that Suhail bin Amr said that uh, in the name of God the most most the most gracious the most merciful, he said that we do not believe in this Rahman the most gracious the most merciful, uh, just put the Bismika Allahumma. Uh, that in the name of uh, Allah, that is if enough. So that was scratched out and that was put in, in place of that. Secondly, it was that from uh, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, and he said, had we believed that you are the messenger of Allah, we wouldn't have had this uh, signing of this treaty. So uh, you should uh, uh, remove that name and uh, put uh, uh, something, uh, put Muhammad bin Abdullah. Okay. And... Uh, the person who was writing this here was Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an. And look at, subhanAllah, Sayyidina Ali said that this is not possible for me to do. I cannot do it at all. Even though the Prophet sallallahu com commanded him to do it, but yet he said uh, this, uh, th this is not permissible. Uh, the, 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 and, uh, and this is where we see uh, that uh, some people would say this is al-adab fawq al-amr, where the respect of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though he was commanded, but the respect. And similarly, we, we in one of the stories of the companions uh, which we done was uh, with um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he was, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, making salah and he came and stood uh, next to the, uh, the Prophet Abdullah bin Abbas, uh, excuse me, Abdullah bin Abbas, where he came and he stood behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, completely behind. And the Prophet also brought him onto his uh, right hand side and again he stepped behind and after the salah the Prophet also asked him why and he said that I cannot, again this was uh, al-adab fawq al-amr because that was uh, the Prophet also pushing him forward but he said that I cannot see myself standing in line or standing so close to you O Prophet of Allah. So um, similarly uh, we can just tell of the respect and the love and the complete devotion the companions had for the Prophet yes. Another incident that happened in the treaty of Hudaybiyah was that when they finished and they signed the contract and the Prophet himself wrote Muhammad bin Abdullah, Suhail bin Amr's own son Abu Jandal, uh, one of the, 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 uh, one of the, 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 the rules in that contract was that if anybody from the Quraysh comes onto the side of the Muslims, without the permission of a guardian, then they're allowed to take him back to the Quraysh. But if anybody comes from the, from the Muslims, then they, are, uh, they not, are not bounded by any permission of a guardian and they may, they may take him back. And in that instance, uh, uh, Abu Jandal came, who was the son of Suhail bin Amr. Mm. And he came onto the side of the Muslims and his wounds were still fresh from the punishments that he had to persevere while being with the disbelievers. And uh, he, the Muslims accepted him and he came in shackles and chains. And Suhail bin Amr said, we had drawn up a contract. And he took him back. And just picture this year, the believers are looking at this year happening. They're looking at this year where a person proclaiming the faith has come onto their side. And here, it, 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 uh, the, 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 in fact, the treaty itself was, uh, you know, not, not honest. 
and here they're taking him back. And Suhail bin Amr, while taking him back, was beating him more on those fresh wounds. And thus, uh, you know, it, Sayyidina Umar could not take it. And he came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked, are we not Muslims? Are you not the Prophet of Allah? How is it possible that we are accepting this here? You know, but the Prophet Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted him the understanding. But here we see the uh, acceptance. We see the, 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 the understanding. And we can also see here how the Sahaba knew and showed love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another instance is that when we look at the Battle of the Ditch, Huzaifa bin Yaman was sent to the army camp and the Battle of the Ditch was a very severe battle. It was very cold, it was very difficult, there was a lot of wind, uh, the Muslims had, uh, you know, the clothing was, I mean, if you read the life of Musa bin Umayr, on one of the t migrations to Abyssinia, he had no shoes. He was walking bare feet, his feet was bleeding. Uh, and always if you read in the Battle of Badr 313, two horses and one camel or uh, two armors, you know, uh, in the Battle of Uhud also poor armor, uh, you know, poor weapons, similarly in the Battle of the Ditch, that is why they had to uh, dig up the ditch because they were poor in weapons, they did not have a lot of, 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 of conveyance. So we see that it was a very tough time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is where we caused an earthquake. We caused a tremor in their hearts. And this is where the real believers came out. And um, what I want to say is that someone from the Tabi'een met Huzaifa bin Yaman. And he said to him, subhanallah. And this makes us understand why we say. And for me, this is the, this is the focal point that we can say that what is your aspiration and what is your uh, going forward towards celebrating the birth of the Prophet? How do you see your celebrating the birth of the Prophet? What does it do to you when you celebrate the birth of the Prophet? What does it increase in you? What do you understand from celebrating the birth of the Prophet? Now let us look at this person who came to Huzaifa bin Yaman and he said to him, are you Huzaifa bin Yaman? He said, yes, I am Huzaifa bin Yaman. This is a tabi'in. He said, Subhanallah, had I been in the time of the Prophet, I would have not allowed his feet to touch the ground. I would have not allowed his feet to touch the ground. Huzaifa bin Yaman said to him, what do you know about love? What do you know about being in the time of the Prophet? You in the time of the tabi'in, alhamdulillah. Do you have to fight your own father in battle? Uh, do you have to leave your own mother in battle? Uh, look at Abu Bakr in the battle, searching for his son, Abdurrahman bin Abu Bakr. His son said to him, oh my father, I saw you in the battlefield, but I tried to avoid you. Abu Bakr said to him, had I seen you, I would have killed you, because you are from amongst the disbelievers. There were other Sahaba who had to fight their own families, their own fathers. Musab bin Umair, a mother that nurtured him, that spoiled him from young, that looked after him and gave him whatever he wants. Uh, picture any young youth in today's time whose parents give him whatever he wants. You wanted a BM? Yeah, here's a BM for you. You want the best branded clothes? Here's the best branded clothes now for Sheikh you. Zakir, I'm going to have to hold you there for a second. We have a phone call from Musa from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Brother Musa? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I want to thank you for calling in and joining our program here tonight. My question is, the Sheikh is, I think I've been a bit confused by the answer of the Sheikh when, when he's saying that he's not against the celebration of the Prophet, the birthday of the Prophet. I just want to know, to confirm, if any of the Saba or any of the, you know, people, you know, uh, or the uh, Saba of the Prophet did celebrate his birthday. I just want a confirmation from that. Okay, all right. Uh, inshallah, we're going to ask the Sheikh this question uh, just after we answer another phone call from Khalid uh, from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Uh, yes, thank you for calling in and joining us here uh, uh, for Huda tonight. Thank you, brother. You go ahead, uh, brother. First of all, it's been an honor to share with my contributions and thoughts in such a topic, which is following the Prophet Salaam, as uh, with Brother Arkham and, of course, with Sheikh Zakaria. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this episode in your benefits of the hereafter. Amen. Regarding the topic, I think that one of the most important things that any believer can understand it as a concept in his life, that following the Prophet Sunnah is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. When we understand that the major verses that came in the Quran, قال الله عز وجل, قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبركم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم. They said, Allah Azzawajal said, if you do love Allah, follow me, Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. For Allah is oft forgiving and most merciful. And also another verse, when Allah Azzawajal said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْرَةٌ حَسَنٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْضُ اللَّهَ يَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرٌ We have indeed in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the final day. And who engages much in the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we understand the often mentioned verses, we can come out that following the Prophet ﷺ Sunnah or the way to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reached through the adherence to the Prophet Muhammad, ﷺ, which is fulfilled through the obedience and the imitation of the Prophet. The second thing we understand also, which is the imitation of the Prophet ﷺ, will not achieve without anticipating Allah's satisfaction and the final day. Also, the scholars, when they put the major indicators for any believer that he loved the Prophet ﷺ and he followed his son. And they said that three indicators for any believer that he should apply it in his life, which is ta'atu fi ma'amar, wa tasdiqu fi ma'akbar, wa jitinabu mana'an wa zajr. That any Muslim, any believer can, must, following the obligations and the regulations of the Prophet ﷺ, and also believe in all what he said, and of course, when he did not apply what the Prophet ﷺ prohibited, or what the Prophet ﷺ informed us through his authentic hadith about the thing that is prohibition by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words. So I think that in today's episode, I have, we have to understand that all the Muslims should understand this concept in their life. We will not speak about celebrating the day or the Mawlid, uh, or only like we will not uh, believe in the Prophet ﷺ when we apply his sunnah in one or two or three days. But we need to make our lifestyle through these verses as a, as a thing that is a concept or as something that is a Muslim live with it, like the concept of worshipping. This can be a concept of the concept of itla'ah, the concept of following the Prophet in all his life, not in celebrating the Mawlid or not in his bare birth or not in this and that. Thank you, brother, for sharing that wonderful piece of advice uh, from the Quran, which is the best source we can uh, extract any source of advice from. Uh, now, uh, we're going to go for a short report uh, break, and then after that, I'm going to ask Brother Musa's question, who called in first to Sheikh Zakaria. So stay tuned. With every new day, I wake up with a greater sense of fulfillment and purpose in serving the Creator through prayer and then serving His creation for His sake. A certain inner happiness develops. When you give to others, what you gain is greater than what you give. If nothing else, just knowing that you've helped someone makes you feel good. Without this feeling, most people would never volunteer for anything. Service brings people together. It spreads love and creates unity. It spreads happiness. Some people think service is limited to volunteering alone, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us to see it in a much broader light. Take for example when he helps Salman al-Farisi by giving him the gold he needed to free himself from slavery. This example inspired me when I saw my colleague at work in financial distress. I made it a habit to greet Mike every day and ask him how he was doing, so I could tell from his body language that something was wrong. So yesterday I finally asked him why he looked bothered. He opened up to me saying he needed a suit for an important personal meeting and he was unable to afford it. He didn't expect me to randomly offer to lend him the money. After all, he barely knew me. 
He asked me repeatedly if I was sure, and I assured him I was. I then told him good luck with your meeting tonight, and not only did he thank me, but even invited me to that meeting which was actually going to be with his dad for the first time in years. I said sure, I'd be honored, and just like that, a new friendship was born. What I know about the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is that he would always exceed the expectations of those who didn't know him. A stranger would instantly love him because he was always serving those around him. In fact, the Prophet peace be upon him said that the best of people are those that benefit people the most. So how befitting that the best of Allah's creation never once missed an opportunity to serve. I asked the man if there was anyone helping him carry his things. He insisted he didn't need any help. But it was really painful to see him carrying boxes alone for so long. At that moment, I remembered the story where the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw an old woman that didn't know him carrying her groceries and helped her even as she warned him to stay away from Muhammad. So I asked him to please let me help him. He seemed embarrassed and honestly even a little skeptical about me at first, but he was too exhausted to say no. The man's smile as we finished moving in his stuff reminded me of Mike's smile when I gave him the money. It was a smile that expressed relief and gratitude. Suddenly this man who was once skeptical about me was thanking me warmly and assuring me that he'd never forget how I helped him. I smiled and said, welcome to the neighborhood. But this story wasn't yet over. The Prophet's sayings about service are plentiful, while his deeds of service are countless. Rasulullah, you never missed an opportunity to serve and to inspire others to serve as well. You always led by example. There you were digging in the trench, side by side with the companions, fetching firewood, carrying stones, in fact even cracking them with your axe. You embodied the concept of a servant leader and taught that service is a privilege, whereas leadership is a responsibility. It was a busy day and I barely made it to the meeting with Mike and his dad. As I walked in, Mike stood up to greet me and introduce me to his father. They say it's a small world. I say it's Allah's world. And how amazing is his decree. Me and Mike's father really hit it off that night. And as we stood up to leave, he asked me, by the way, where are you from? I paused and said, I'm an American, a Muslim American. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, whoever relieves a believer of distress in this world, Allah will relieve him of distress on the Day of Judgment. Allah is in the cause of his servant as long as he is in the cause of his brother. Welcome back to Huda tonight. Now, before that short video clip, uh, Brother Musa called in and asked a very important question. He asked Sheikh Zakaria, if any of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ ever celebrated his birthday. Now I want to put this question to Sheikh Zakaria. Go ahead, Sheikh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. One of the things that we need to understand was, is that, first of all, why I'm saying I'm not fully against it, one, that we, one thing that we need to understand, the concept of celebrating a birth, birthday amongst the Arab uh, you know, customary or even the Islamic customary is nowhere to be found. That is a fact. There is no celebrating of a birthday. The only reason why we look at this day of the Prophet as a great day is that if you look at there are certain prophets that Allah SWT has uh, given loftiness or has given favors upon others. You know, tilka rusulu fadalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. So there are those that Allah SWT spoke to. There is prophets that Allah SWT spoke to some that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them certain miracles. So there's different uh, f favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted to some. And then there are certain times and places which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also granted. For example, if you take a land that is barren and you make that land waqf and you make it a masjid, then, every t then that land becomes a, 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 a land of ibadah. So this is the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on someone who makes an intention of a masjid. Similarly, time. Uh, there is certain times where you make certain ibadat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases your reward. There are certain times, for example, between the time of uh, Asr to Maghrib. 
uh, there are certain uh, times when you make certain ibadat because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, favored that time. Now, looking at us as the Muslim world, when we look at the day and the birth and the time of the Prophet sallallahu was an auspicious day. Many miracles happened on that day. So, there is even a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu was asked, why do you fast on a Monday? And the Prophet sallallahu replied, because I was born on a Monday. So, certain, uh, secondly, we made mention that looking at the day of Ashura, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said to them that we should fast on this day. So that was what we understand as a celebrating. Coming to understand from this year is that we are not saying now that it is not permissible, but it is how do you look at that day. Fasting on that day, that is showing, uh, that is showing uh, your, your, your happiness for the day of the Prophet ﷺ. Saying you are against it, uh, meaning that you cannot even, so that's why we are saying that we should encourage people that how do you celebrate this day. We shouldn't erase it completely by saying that this was not practiced, but rather encourage people to fast on this day. Encourage people on this day to uh, recite uh, more because of the time that this day comes upon. And like we have made mention, this time is a precious time because there are certain times which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever the time is repeated, the rewards and the bounties of the time is repeated on that time. Now, why scholars say that, uh, you know, there is a difference of opinions because we do not even know the day. And that is why I'm saying it is such a technical, uh, uh, it is such a technical uh, matter, uh, which is so fine-lined that doing the, 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 the most cautious thing is that fast on this day, uh, recite salawat on this day, make adhkar on this day, recite nawafil salah on this day. That is also a way of celebrating through ibadat uh, because we do not negate that you cannot completely celebrate on this day because this is in actual fact a day of uh, where light, where darkness was, lightness was, sh was brought onto darkness, where the, 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 the burning, uh, uh, you know, the, the flames of the Persian uh, was, was extinguished, where the light that you know came before the sunrise from the side of the east uh you know where the 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 uh, the, 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 the the compassion and the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended uh where we in today's time can say that alhamdulillah that same faith uh, be through the mercy of the prophet sallallahu alaihi right. wasallam many things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought through the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so what we know is that that is a blessed time. Now because that is a blessed time, we can encourage people on that blessed time that fast, do some good deeds for on that time because of the day and because of what this day beholds within it, this is an auspicious day. And maybe uh, and on this day, the Prophet Sallallahu himself mentioned that he used to fast. So that is what we would encourage people to do. And because it is such a fine line, we wouldn't encourage people to go out and do certain extreme things on this day. Uh, nor would we encourage people not to do anything on this day. Rather, we bring it onto moderation and we say fast on this day. Mm -hmm. Spend your time reciting salawat on this day. Make adhkar on this day. Increase your lifestyle in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam on this day because it is a blessed day. Okay, and aside from the Prophet Sallallahu birthday, what are other ways we in which we can show our love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The best way to show the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what the one caller had just made mention, uh, that follow me, that follow my lifestyle. I have left behind you two things, the book of Allah and my practice, which is the sunnah. If you keep steadfast on that day, that will be your guide. The, the, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were our guide and what we are saying is that uh, that is why we find ourselves in the 21st century there are many things which because of the distance becomes confusing to us and that is why because of so much of uh, uh, of, of, of differences of opinions and there is so much of controversy in this matter itself uh, there are many that would bring forward uh, proofs to show you that you know what there is some certain blessings on this day. Then there are many who would bring forward to you that no, you shouldn't 
invoke any uh, any uh, types of ibadah on this day. Many scholars bring the different types of opinions, and there are even uh, scholars who, who are of high figures that that, that, that saw this day as a, a day of celebration. And there are other scholars who do not see this day as a day of celebration. So that is why I say it comes back again to every individual to ask himself that what do you see in this day? What is this day for you? And like we were saying that to show love towards the Prophet wasallam is that you implement his lifestyle, is that you read the, the history, of the, 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 that you go through the annals of history of what was the sacrifices of the Prophet wasallam for this ummah that you try and implement the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu into your life and that you begin to feel the true love which the companions felt for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how you can increase your love towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just from an academic point of view, uh, as Brother Musa asked, did any of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam celebrate his birthday? Or? There is no proof that any of the companions celebrated but then again when we use the word celebrate were the companions that fasted on this day mm -hmm. we should look at that in that aspect were there any companions who fasted on this day were there any companions who increased the ibadah on this day because sometimes when we use the word celebrate someone in his mind what happens is giving sweets and you know dancing and jumping around and you know ribbons falling from the sky and uh, you know, red and blue lights and cakes and whatever. This is not the term that we are using. Mm -hmm. Celebrating here, in fact, we should, we should rather say, how do we uh, expose our happiness on this day? And then again, take a look at what was on this day, what was the habit of the companions. So many of them already were fasting on a Monday and a Thursday. Uh, many of them would... The ibadah was already, Sayyidina Abu Bakr himself mentioned uh, that uh, if, 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 if I had to see, uh, if, 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 if Jannah had to be brought in front of me, they would change nothing for me because I worship Allah uh, to, the, to, to the T, to the extent where nothing would make a difference to me because he is, he, he, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already entered his heart. The love of the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, was already prevalent on him. So nothing would change that. So this is why we say that we can use these special times to begin a good start because of the time of this day. So we can use this as a beginning of a new start that we implement the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Yes, there is no way that we saw that, that we can find in the life of the companions or the Khairul Qur'an for that matter where they would, uh, you know, the only time that you, if you look into history, they show you the period of the Fatimids, which was a Shia dynasty where they began the celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu and then uh, some of the Sunni scholars and then coming down until our 21st century. But in the Khairul Qur'an, there is no proof for this year. And that is why I'm saying that for looking at that aspect, we should not go on to an extreme level because that is an innovation. There is no doubt in that in going through an extreme level. But then again, well, let us look at our condition. What was the condition of the, the, the companions of the Prophet? Their condition was already like they were celebrating on that day because of the abundance of fasting. The abundance of, 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 of salawat, the abundance of remembrance of Allah. So there was no difference. That is why we cannot extract because they didn't t choose a day to reflect each and every day. They used to reflect. They used to day. reflect. So, so <laughs> we in this 21st century, when do we reflect? We have become so weak that we need certain, and, 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 and I'm not going back on my word now to say that we have made days our culture in that, but these are times where we can use this to give us a kickstart because many of us are just stuck. And when these times come, we can use this as a kickstart to, to performing the ibadah, to performing the fasting on this day, uh, which can also be what we uh, translate as the celebration of the birth of the Prophet also. All right. Thank you, Sheikh Zakaria, for joining me here on Hadith tonight and sharing your thoughts. Uh, also, thank you, dear viewers. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's program. Join us again next Monday for segment two, where we will continue our companion series. And stay tuned for segment three, where, we'll be, where we will be discussing different ways in which we can 
uh, create successful relationships with our co-workers and with people in general. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home.